I'm gonna get into a little bit more of a complex design at this point here. And this is um, a, a, it's an example of a, of, a, of a brewery, which I had to pick something fun for lunchtime, okay? So in this case, we have a very simple design. It consists of a frame, a rack, two shelves, a couple of stainless um, bins or pots. We have different burners on them. And then we have some options that we could look at for this design. And if I were to look at my iLogic, you'll see that we have a number of rules within this, okay? So you can see here that we actually, we have a placeholder in here called the end of assembly rules. And if I look at this, you know, there's really nothing in here. It's it's just a placeholder. So we made it look, let's say this is the end of the assembly rules. The rest of these are more drawing rules, okay, that we made. So you can see here that we have con converting the tier text to a number or setting the kettle size, setting the burner type, making feet, frames, casters, pumps. One of the things I want to stress when you're thinking about doing iLogic is keep your rules simplified. It is oftentimes better to have multiple rules than one giant rule with 30 different functions with inside of it. So if I were to look at this one like set burner type, you'll see that this is a very simple rule. What does it do? It just says, hey, depending on what the burner type is, change these parameters. Okay, that's it. It's not a complex rule. It just, it says, hey, do something. And then I can call these rules from other rules. But these rules are also dependent upon my parameters. And in this case, we actually put together a very nice form for this example. So you can see in here that we have a configuration for my assembly. And in this case, I'm basically, I, I did it so that we have two tabs in my form, okay? What type of component do we want component drawings? What type do we want the sheets and top drawing? Do we want to update the assembly drawing every time I do this? And then I have some other tools down here built in that I say open the assembly drawing or open the top assembly, save all the documents, close all the docs, and of course then we have this nice little readme help file. So these are tools for the designer. So in this case, I'm not going to update the drawing. I just want to go in and let's say, hey, instead of two tiers, maybe I want three tiers. And what will happen is I'll go through and make some changes. What size kettles do I want? Let's go with small. Okay. And I want small burners. I want some boil over trays and I want a caster on this. Okay. And then we'll apply that. And what you'll see is it takes all of my new settings and it will go through and take, yeah, that's fine. It'll go through and adjust my drawing and my model to match what my requirements are. So you can see here that it put in my boil over trays, my casters, it made three tiers, it put the different burners in, and it adjusted the size of my pots, okay? So very simply, I just, you know, it, it had me go through and answer some questions, and it just made some swaps for me. Now, I could have updated the assembly drawing, but I can also just say, well, let's open the assembly drawing at this point here. Let's open this. And what you'll see is it'll actually open the drawing associated with this, okay? And it'll go through and it automatically updates all the drawing views for me. We can open the top assembly. I can say, save all docs. What it will do is it'll go through everything that's open and save it for me, okay? I could go through then and say, close all the drawing docs. It goes and closes my drawings, just goes back to my assembly. And then worst case scenario, I can go click on the help file. And what this will do is this will bring up a little example of how to how this works in trying to configure and help develop and deploy something for your users that make this very worthwhile and simple. Okay, so again, this is just a very very simple README file. You can write it. We saved it as an HTML. That code just launches that HTML file. Okay, so if I wanted to go back to large and we'll go back to banjo type, apply that, and what will happen is it'll go through and buzz all my stuff again for me change the burners and we can see those burners change on the bottom here as well now there is so much so much more that you can do with with iLogic and again this is just some simple example okay there are you know if we were to go through and look at these rules these rules are are very simple rules okay and i mean you know i'm looking at something as simple as this. If the tier is this, then set it to that, okay? Not really complex. 
there are a number of system snippets, but there are also these ones called custom snippets. And these are ones that you can create. So if you've written a very neat piece of little code that does something and you'd like to reuse it, you can simply highlight all your stuff, right click on this, okay? And you can say, I want to capture this snippet. And you can make your own little snippet. And so some of these are, you know, useful. You know, like, how do I split an entire sentence into words? What if I read in an entire sentence from a piece of text file, but I need to break it up into separate words? Well, we have that. We have that tool for you. You know, it would go through and say, dim separators, words, split strings, things of that nature. Okay. Um, we have some of those tools. Uh, another one here. I'll just put in a new one so it's easier. You know, what if I wanted to publish a, save as a PDF, okay? We could go through here and you'll see that I'm exporting a parameter, publish a T 2D DWF or this, that, here and there, okay? I happen to have that PDF already as an external rule, but let's say we wanted to save, I don't know, export this as a DXF from an IDW, okay? So if I were to go in and create a rule called this DXF, I could just double click on this and it'll put everything in here for me. Okay, that's all it is. When we call it snippet, it's just saved code. And so some of these external rules I have, these are things like, you know, PDF export. Okay, very simple. This is one that goes through and this is the simplest of rule. It just simply puts a PDF and it saves the name as a PDF. Okay, now this is as simple as it comes, but there's no options. I can also go through, let's see if this is the one I'm looking for. This PDF gets a little bit more complex because this one, I'm not saving the files of PDF, I'm actually using the PDF translator. So you can see in this case, I get a bit more complex because I need to identify it from the GUID. I can go through and use some standard VB commentary such as this application and different things internal. This is where I'm actually able to go through and actually use some of the PDF add-in object and I can set, I can define all my colors as black, I can remove line weights, vector resolution, sheet ranges, how do I wanna do this? So there are multiple ways to, to skin this cat. One is a very simple rule, one is a much more complex rule. And the one thing I wanted to make sure I point this out is that iLogic is really a simplified front end to work with VB, but you can run this as straight VB code, not iLogic code. So this is another way of actually writing straight code for this. You can also reference DLLs that you wrote in .NET or other programming languages. You can call them from within your iLogic rules. So you know, we can make our rules as simple as we want or as complex as we want. And I would strongly suggest staying as simple as possible in the beginning because it's often easier to, to debug and work with some of those things.